Dick Cheney was vice president under George W. Bush for eight years and was a close friend of Scalia's. He joins us from Wilson, Wyoming tonight. Mr. Vice President, thanks for being here. I do want to talk about your reflections of your late friend, Justice Scalia. But first, if I may, sir, talk about the breaking news today. You have the leading candidate for the Republican nomination attacking President Bush and you and the decision made, decisions made by the Bush administration. You heard at the debate Saturday Donald Trump accused President Bush uh, and his team of purposely lying the country into war in Iraq, saying, I will tell you they lied. They said there were weapons of mass destruction, there were none, they knew there were none. Your response? Um, he sounds like a liberal democrat to me, Brett. Um, he's wrong and he's, he's uh, I think, deliberately uh, promoting those views in order to advance his political interest on uh, the uh, uh, question of uh, WMD. Uh, charge that uh, the administration lied. That was thoroughly investigated by the Rob Silberman Commission. They found absolutely no evidence whatsoever to support that. Uh, on the notion, for example, that uh, the president failed to act before 9-11 to stop it, we had no actionable intelligence at that point. It simply wasn't available. Uh, there was nothing we could have done, and we didn't have intelligence at that point to suggest other than there's a general kind of a threat. Um, the other areas, uh, if, for example, if you look at what we did in the aftermath of 9-11, uh, we did, in fact, keep the nation safe for seven and a half years. The president put in place some important programs, the terrorist surveillance program, enhanced interrogation techniques. All of those things gave us the information we needed to be able to act, and we had uh, tremendous support of the American uh, military. They did a superb job. So uh, for... Uh, uh, Mr. Trump to suggest that, uh, just to, in my mind, is, uh, is way off base. Um, he clearly doesn't understand or has, has not spent any time learning about the facts of that period. Mr. Vice President, it's not just uh, the debate on Saturday night, which obviously got very heated. Today at a press conference, uh, he doubled and tripled down on the did President Bush and his administration make the country safer. Uh, take a listen real quick. What does that mean he kept the country safe after 9-11? In other words, we had this major catastrophe and after that. What does that mean after? What about during 9-11? I was there. I lost a lot of friends that were killed in that building. The worst attack ever in this country? It was during his presidency. I mean, we had the worst attack ever. By the way, after that, we did okay. That's meaning uh, the team scored 19 runs in the first inning. But after that, we played well. I don't think so. This is the leading candidate for the Republican nomination. Yeah, it's hard to tell sometimes, isn't it? He, uh, the fact is that um, if you're going to look to try to find some way where uh, you could blame uh, someone for what happened on 9-11, it would be an intelligence failure beforehand, uh, the previous administration, I think, uh, Bill Clinton's even uh, suggested, or it's been suggested, that he had an opportunity to take uh, bin Laden out before 9-11, and he failed to do it. Now, as soon as we uh, had were hit by 9-11, uh, I know a little bit about it. I was in the White House bunker all that day and helping coordinate and manage our response to 9-11. To I didn't see... Uh, I didn't see Donald Trump there. I've never seen him involved in any way that would lead me to believe that uh, uh, he had any firsthand or practical experience about it. So you do I, see uh, I, it's a disappointment, frankly, that he's uh, acting that way. I haven't endorsed anybody. I don't have an axe to grind in terms of that. But uh, I think uh, it's, it's uh, uh, misleading for him to uh, campaign on that basis. But if he won the nomination, would you support him? I've said I'll support the nominee of my party. Um, if he operates the way he's operating, sounding like a liberal Democrat, uh, I don't think he'll get the nomination. But if he does, you would support the nominee? I've always said I would support the nominee of my party. That's been my traditional practice. You do see his support in New Hampshire and polls across the country tapping into this anti-establishment uh, anger at not only the Obama administration and Congress, but going back to your administration that you served in. Right. But I, I think uh, one of the disappointing aspects of what he's doing, uh, I think especially have an impact there in South Carolina, is the way he treats uh, these issues and the people involved in it. Um, 
does, I think, a great service to the tremendous uh, disservice to the tremendous record of our military and our intelligence personnel who put their lives on the line during that period of time. We were very successful in Iraq, especially with the surge in 07 and 08. By the time we left office, uh, Iraq was in great shape. What happened then was that uh, Barack Obama came to town, withdrew uh, presence from uh, that part of the world, and ISIS emerged after that. You've got to tell the whole story if uh, you want to focus on those events, and of course, uh, Mr. Trump never does. Before we probe your recollections of your friend, the late Justice uh, Scalia, I wonder if you can get into the political view that's really driving this coverage about whether President Obama should nominate a successor to fill the vacancy and whether the Republican Senate majority uh, should block that process from moving forward uh, in this current environment. Your thoughts? Well, I, I, uh, I'm not a senator, obviously, at this stage. I don't have a vote. Um, I think uh, the, the Senate Republican leadership has addressed the issue. Certainly, Obama has the um, uh, prerogative to nominate someone, and then it'll be up to the Senate to decide how they want to proceed. It's a very, very important issue. It's not just another appointment, obviously, uh, trying to replace a man and the greatness and capabilities of uh, Nino Scalia, um, especially in terms of the kinds of issues that are coming up down the road. And uh, I think the Senate Republicans should take a very, very careful look at it. And uh, I'm of those who believe that it would be best if uh, it was left until the next president was elected. But you have fought for strong executive powers. You were often talked about Article 2, Section 2 of the Constitution, and have even talked about federal judicial appointments uh, having up or down votes in the Senate. Why would this be different? Well, I think uh, what we're talking about here is an extraordinarily uh, contentious debate. Uh, it's a crucial moment in our history. Uh, I think the uh, fact that uh, um, Obama is perceived, certainly, by many in my party, and I think others as well, too, as having played fast and loose with the Constitution himself, uh, going forward with a series of executive orders on things like the Environmental Protection Agency, uh, things that Congress wouldn't pass. He's then moved to try to put it in place, uh, for example, the coal plan. Well, the Supreme Court just a couple of weeks ago uh, put a hold on the implementation of that plan because its constitutionality hasn't been tested and, and is suspect in, in many ways. So I, um, I am an advocate of strong executive, but I'm not uh, supportive of somebody who's operated the way uh, President Obama has, where I think he's, he has played fast and loose, if you will, with the, with the Constitution. Tell us about Nino Scalia, the man you knew when you met him, if there's anything he said to you, any special moments that stick out. Uh, as we look back at his life and legacy? Well, our um, uh, basically our relationship was that of, of friends. Uh, we started about the same time in Washington, he working in the Justice Department, I was working in the Ford administration. Um, we became close friends over the years. We didn't have any places where our paths crossed from a political standpoint. He was a judge and, and I was a political appointee. Um, we spent a lot of time hunting together. Uh, just last fall, we hunted in California and then also again uh, down in Louisiana. Um, he had uh, this tremendous intellect, uh, great uh, gift of a historical perspective on the Republic and the Constitution, but at the same time, he was a, a delight to be with. Uh, great sense of humor, uh, loved to laugh, and uh, a close friend that will be, be sadly missed.